On a Sankranti day, thousand miles from Pune, the Peshwa had fought and lost, not just a battle, but a self-belief. But Diwali was different. The enemy was at the door. More than 100,000 strong cavalry, infantry and artillery was at Vanauri, about five miles from Shaniwarwara, baying for blood. Somewhere in the city was a seven-year-old girl. The little girl Bhima was anxious. Everybody was somebody in Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, London, Lisbon, Paris and beyond waited that Sunday. Would post Talikota Vijayanagara story be repeated? Everyone knew that the attacker had more than one reason to do so. No one knew his intent. The British EIC had just concluded the war with Tipu two years back. They too watched the Marathas fighting amongst. Professional European military officers were on either side fighting for the local rulers far away from their homes. The warring armies were not just secular, but also cosmopolitan. The two sides were evenly matched. The defenders of Pune included names like Kulb Ali Khan, Ambaji Ingle, Captain Dave, Sutherland, Sadashiv Bhaskar, under the overall leadership of General Bakshi. The aggressors included names like Mir Khan, Colonel Harding, Sahamat Khan, Fateh Singh Mane each of them being an impact player in his own right. But all eyes were on one man. On the death of Khande Rao, his widow had prepared herself for Sati. When the old war horse ordained his 29-year-old daughter-in-law as the next ruler to succeed upon his death. The old war horse Malhar Rao was born in Hol near Pune and came to be known as Subedar Malhar Rao Holkar. Soon enough, he was winning battles for the Peshwa Pajira I who appointed Malhar Rao as governor of Malwa with base in Indore. The early cracks appeared a decade later. Sadashiv Bhav, instead of Raghoba Dada, arrived in the north to tackle the Abdali threat. Old-timers like Malhar Rao were sidelined rather rudely by calling him a dhangar or shepherd. Ahilya Devi had no heir, Tukuchi took charge of the legacy but died soon after, within two years at Pune. The Holkas had a deep connect with Pune. They had built a huge fortress within a decade after Bajirao had made Shaniwarwara. The walls, the bricks, the bastions, the ramparts, everywhere 
the story of the napoleon of india echoes the hawkers had also built another wada close by the longest serving chief justice of india considered this legacy wada to be his home and so does the soon to be chief justice of india dhananjay chandrachud Tokuji Holkar's death in 1797 initiated political intrigues. He had left behind four sons. The senior most, Kashira, was not necessarily the most capable, but he had ambition and intent. Meanwhile in Pune Bajira II had become the Peshwa in 1796 after a series of palace maneuvers The young and ambitious Dalatra Sindhya was in an expansion mode his influence extended from Delhi to Pune he had only one hurdle left to cross the house of Holkar Dalatra's stars were divinely on the ascendancy as it presented opportunities In the same year when Tukoji had died Kashi Malhar and Yashwant Tolkar had come to Pune to resolve the succession row through discussions So as it happens on a dark night the long shiny knives were out Malhar Holkar was killed in the darkness while the youngest Yashwant managed to escape using the same darkness There was no place left to hide Kashira controlled the Holkar territories. He was a hunted man in the Peshwa and Mughal territories. All doors had been closed for Yashwant. It was but a matter of time. Soon enough news reached Pune that Yashwant had sought refuge with the Nagpur Bhosle, who out of his relationship with the old Malhar Rao had helped the young Yashwant. This is where the story turns for the Peshwa, Shinde and India. At that time, Yashwant was barely 20. The hunter was set to become the hunter. History does not happen in one day. There are many events that accumulate to make history. 16th April 1801 was one such day that can strongly claim to have decided the fate of the Peshwa and Pune the Peshwa army had captured the rebel Bhutoji Hokar a few days back and brought him to Pune on that morning the citizens of Pune had gathered on the Shaniwar Wada grounds they waited to see the justice of Peshwa no weekly market Bhutoji was the grandson of Malhar Rao Holkar, one of the founding members of the Peshwa Empire and brother of Maharaja Yashwant Holkar. After 200 lashes were inflicted on the bare body of Bhutoji, there was a long pause. An eerie silence enveloped the crowd. the peace was signaled and that's when the nobility and the commoners realized what was coming bhutoji also could not believe that the peshwa would be so foolish to be so cruel there was cheering around and some even shouted slogans supporting the peshwa mob psychology ever since the days of gladiator games changes when it sees blood it strikes our base emotions that thursday mercy was not in pune as the peshwa delivered the final blow the body was to be left on the ground for one day he had clearly underlined the message the storm however did not come immediately instead 
the man prepared the most elaborate military campaign plan in line with his reputation some 557 days later on the following diwali he finally reached pune with his fireworks comparisons with the greatest general of all times who was also his contemporary were being made like napoleon who had risen fast in the ranks to become a brigadier general at the age of 24 yashwan too in a matter of couple of years had put together an army that was the most feared fighting machine in the country he had taken inspiration from shivaji maharaj he had been coronated as per vedic rites and was now at the gates of pune to challenge his ex master even his military strategies were inspired by the guerrilla tactics of shivaji maharaj yashwan depended on speed like the second founder bajira first and like him led from the front the peshwa reached parvati in his diwali finery first to pray and then to watch while shinde's army stood between the peshwa and yashwant on that diwali morning the protagonists were all young men dalatra was 23 years young bajira second was 27 years and yashwant was 25 the peshwa had played his cards close to his chest for all the confidence of the military generals he had already reached out to the british eic as a contingency measure by lunch the results were visible by afternoon yashwant had been struck a few times and was bleeding by evening the peshwa had fled the city The city was left without any leadership very much like what the Raya family had done after Talikota when they had deserted Vijayanagar It was Diwali Eve but the city was tense as people packed up to flee markets were empty no one was celebrating for they knew what the Peshwa had done to his brother and could only imagine what was in Yashwant's mind As the sun set, Parvati looked deserted, and the city prepared itself for the music. And his troops of nearly hundred thousand were straining at the leash, keen to ransack Pune. It was part of the deal that the soldiers of the winning side would get the spoils of the war, wealth and women. The moonless night was probably the toughest on Yashwant. Patience is tested most. when the fruits of labor are within reach he had waited long to celebrate diwali he ordered the army to stay back at vanauri he made it clear that anyone indulging in loot would be severely punished Pune survived but not those who had invited him even though the peshwa himself had fled probably we can only guess it was a joy of meeting his 7 year old daughter that overshadowed retribution pune was relieved she smiled again Today, when we look back at the role played by these young men, we have the advantage of hindsight. We also have the advantage of noting what they did afterwards. Eventually, after the Basin Treaty, he was escorted back into Pune by the EIC army. Peshwa built Vishram Bagh and lived a decadent life in the protection of the British. 
After Khadki, he was exiled off to distant Kanpur on pension. The House of Shinde signed a treaty with the EIC and were accorded princely status. They continued to flourish, even today playing a crucial role in our national leadership. Maharaja Yashwant Holkar was offered a generous peace proposal as an equal by the EIC. Then he started work on his ambitious Calcutta campaign but died before he could execute his grand plan of pushing the EIC out of India. The seven-year-old little girl would grow up to fight the British when she was 22 and inspire another queen from Jhansi to do the same in the 1857 war. In the 1950s, when the prominent educationist Karamvir Bhaurav Patil approached the Holkar family for help to start a school in Pune, they gave him the sprawling heritage wada outside Pune. These schools are also referred to as Vastigra or hostel schools that offer free boarding, lodging and tuition. The children are unprivileged, not untalented. <laughs>